So welcome to this latest video on 162 Maths and this video will be continuing with some GCSE revision going through an AQA topic test on the higher syllabus with a focus on coordinates and linear graphs. Now there will be a copy of the questions and worksheets in the description below for you to download and have a go at before we work through the answers in this video. Now before we get started on working through these coordinates and linear graph questions, one thing I strongly would urge you is to learn some of the more simple formulas that are more used at higher level, i.e. at AS level in terms of coordinate geometry, or if you're studying a level 2 further maths then you may be introduced to these formulas. Now hopefully your teacher does use these or introduces these uh, formulas to you because it will make a lot of the popular questions relating to coordinates and linear graphs that so much more easier. Now obviously in terms of there is a lot of geometry questions that involve two coordinates so sometimes and commonly you're asked to work out the distance between two points, the gradient between two points and the midpoint two points. Now in terms of the notation, if you've never seen this x1, y1 before, then basically if you are given two coordinates, let's just go for 3, 2, and let's go for minus 8 and 4. Now those coordinates can be written in any different way, so let's just call this coordinate 1 and this coordinate 2. And it doesn't really matter which one is 1, which one is 2. Uh, I don't know why I'm writing that, but there you go. Then this value here is my x1, this value here is my y1, this here is my x2, and this is my y2 value. And then I can then substitute those numbers into these formulas to work out the respective things I've been asked to find. So in terms of the equation between two points, knowing what m is and knowing a point that it passes through. So again, remembering that this is, you can use y equals mx plus c, that is absolutely fine. But again, you may use that when you're given a coordinate, you don't have to find c if you were to use this formula here. Now this next set is really, really important because a lot of the high level coordinate questions relate to proof and things like proving that lines are parallel or checking if lines are parallel or checking things are per perpendicular or not perpendicular. And this is where you have to kind of quote these two things. Now the videos that I go through in terms of gradients and parallel and perpendicular do go over this in more detail, but I strongly, in terms of your notes or revision posters, strongly recommend that you do make a note of these because obviously I will be referencing these when we go through some of the questions which is a nice segue to let's get started. So let me just zoom in and mess this all up and see if we can get through these questions. So question one says circle the equation of the line that is parallel to six y equals six minus three x. Now parallel lines have the same gradient so the gradient of this line is minus three so here if I write m equals minus 3 then what I'm looking for is which one of these equations has a gradient of minus 3. Now just be careful that you need to make sure that whenever you're reading the values of the gradient or the y-intercept you have to have y equals y the subject. So which line has a gradient of minus 3? Well it's going to be our second option which is y equals minus 3x minus 6. Then moving on to question 2 it says which of these uh, is a sketch of 5 minus 4x. Now in terms of looking at the components of this equation, we're looking for a negative gradient and we are looking for a positive y-intercept, so positive y-intercept. So in terms of this, and it's going to be an intercept at 5, so the answer then though is b. Moving on to question 3, it says that A is 0, 4 and B is at 10, 9 and obviously it's not drawn to scale and the question is asking us to find the midpoint between the line A and B. So if I just write down what the coordinates are for these two points and again what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that midpoint formula which is y, sorry, x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2. Two. So all you've got to do is add the two x ordinates, add the y to two y ordinates, and then obviously divide it by two, and you've got your coordinate. So here it's going to be uh, zero plus ten divided by two, which is five, and then for the y ordinate it's going to be four plus nine, which is thirteen, divided by two, which is going to give me six point five. The next question then says work out the gradient. So again, to work out the gradient, which we nominate as the value of m, so it's y two minus y one. I can write which I can't and x2 minus x1 so substituting numbers in I've got so if I just call this x y2 x2 this is y1 x1 in which what I've got is I've got 9 minus 4 over and then I've got 10 minus 0 
which gives me 5 over 10, which gives me a half. That's the grin of that line. Now it then says uh, to CD is the line perpendicular to AB, which passes through M. Work out the equation of this line. So if it's perpendicular, then the gradient is going to be minus 1 over of a half, which is minus 2. And my coordinate that it's going through is M, and the coordinate for M is six, 5 and 6, or 13 over 2, or 6.5. So let's just leave it as 6.5. So for this one, do is work out the equation. So substitute it into the line of Y minus Y1 equals MX minus X1. And substitute those numbers in. So this is my M. This is my X1. This is my Y1. So what I've got is I've got Y minus 6.5 equals minus 2 x minus and it's going to be 5. Now expand the brackets out I get y minus 6.5 equals minus 2x plus 10 and then if I take the 6.5 out to the side I get y equals minus 2x plus 16.5. Now if you left it as a fraction you could even accept it as minus 2x plus and then 16.5 is going to be uh, 33 over 2. And, or you could have an equation of where you've got minus 4x plus 33 all over f. That's, that's going to be over uh, 2. And that will give you the same. So any of these possible answers would be fine as your final answer. Moving on to question 4. It says AB is parallel to CD. Work out the equation of CD. So in terms of the equation of a line, what we need to do is work out the gradient first. So the, Now in terms of the gradient, so M is going to be the gradient of this line, which if we look at the actual dimensions, I don't need to use the formula. It's got a height of 8 and a base of 2. So it's going to be 8 over 2, which is 4. The gradient's going up, so it's positive 4. And the coordinate I know for this point here is at 6, 0. So my coordinate then is 6, 0. So here is my M value, and this is my X1 y1 value. So substituting the values into y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Then what I've got is I've got y minus 0 equals 4x minus 6. And then if I just scroll down and just expand the bracket, so I've got y equals 4x minus 24. And there is the equation of CD. So just write it there. y equals 4x minus 24. Then moving on to question 5, it says the line AB has the equation of 5y equals 2 minus 3x and the line CD has the equation of 3y equals 5x plus 1 and the question is asking is AB perpendicular to CD and we need to show our working. Now if it's perpendicular, so if perpendicular, then the gradient of AB times the gradient of CD must equal minus 1. And that's the proof that I'm going to be using. So to work it, this out, what I need to do is first of all work out the gradient of this line. So I've got 3y equals 5x plus 1. So I need to get y the subject. So it's going to be 5 over 3x plus a third. So here, the gradient is going to be 5 over 3. Now looking at this equation here, let's do that in a different color. So here I've got 5y equals 2 minus 3x. Again, making y the subject end up with 2 over 5 minus 3 over 5x. So here my gradient is minus 3 over 5. So from this and using these two values and using this proof here, let's multiply those two e gradients together. So here I've got 5 over 3 times minus 3 over 5. So 5 times minus 3 is minus 15. And 3 times 5 is 15, which simplifies to give me minus 1. So as it does equal minus 1, so as the gradient of AB times the gradient of CD equals minus 1, AB is perpendicular to CD. Now, obviously, you could work out in terms of using the formula of minus 1 over the gradient of AB, but I would say how I've done there is a good setup for you if you've in, if you're got ambitions of doing AF, uh, A level maths in terms of quantum geometry. That's probably the best route and proof to use.
Moving on to question six, it says that a is minus five minus two, b is two minus three, c is four minus one, uh, four one, and d is minus three two. And it says a, b, and d, c are parallel. Prove that a, b, c, d is a parallelogram. Now to prove it's a parallelogram, what I need to do is I need to prove that the gradient of a, d is equal to the gradient of b, c. So I need to work out what those two coordinates are. So again, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working out the gradient of each of those. And let me just zoom out just so I can see the coordinates of each of those. And let me just move it up slightly. So looking at this then, let's work out the gradient of A, D. So again, using A and D, so let me just highlight those two. So I've got, I'll use D as my second coordinate. So I've got 2 and I've got minus 3. And for A, I've got minus 2 and I've got minus 5. And here we are subtracting. So 2 minus minus 2 becomes 4. And minus 3 minus minus 5 becomes a plus. So it's minus 3 plus 5, which is 2, which gives me a gradient of 2. Then working out the gradient of BC. So again, I'm going to use C as my second coordinate. So here I've got 1 and I've got 4. And then for the second for B, I've got minus 3 and I've got 2, and they're both being subtracted. So here I've got my 1 minus minus 3, which is 4. 4 take away 2 is 2, which is 2. So you can see there that I've got 2 of the same gradient. So as the gradients are the same, line, uh, sorry, A, uh, a, B, C, D is a parallelogram. And you might want to say, as the, the same, basically what we've showed is that A, D is parallel to B, C. And so therefore it must be a parallelogram because you've got two parallel lines, sides on a parallelogram. Then looking at 6b it says that show that a b and c d is not a rectangle so what we need to do to prove this is what we need to show is prove that one of the angles is not perpendicular so if we just take the two angles so we need to show that a d is not perpendicular to a b now, in terms of the gradient of AD, we know that. So gradient of AD, we know, is 2. So working out the gradient of AB, well, AB is going to be, and uh, let's just use B as our second. So we've got minus 3 over 2. And we've got A, which is minus 2, minus 5. So minus 2, minus 5. And we're taking those away. So what I've got is I've got minus 3 plus 2, which is minus 1. And I've got 2 minus minus 5, which is 7. So here, if it's perpendicular, so what I'm going to do, so as the gradient of AD times the gradient of AB is not equal to minus 1, then a, the line AD and the line AD and line AB is not perpendicular. So, ah, what am I doing? So, therefore, ABCD is not a rectangle. So, something along those lines would be absolutely fine. And there we are done.